Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Daily Decrypt. Today it takes 246 dollars, 215 euros, or 160 British pounds to purchase one Bitcoin. WikiLeaks has announced the crowdfunding of a $50,000 bounty for any footage or documentation related to the U.S. bombing of a hospital in Afghanistan. At least 22 people, both doctors and patients, were killed by the bomb, and WikiLeaks is hoping to incentivize the next Chelsea Manning. Both fiat and bitcoin are accepted as pledges, and payment need not be made unless footage or documentation is leaked. Musician Imogen Heap has opened up to Forbes about the details of Mycelia, the Ethereum-hosted smart contract with which she hopes to one day host her music. Nothing like Mycelia yet exists, but Heap explains that she wanted to put the idea out there to gauge the reaction from listeners and other musicians alike. Whether or not Heap places her music in an Ethereum smart contract in the future remains to be seen, but one thing is clear, and that is that many in the music industry are fed up with third-party payment processors. Brave New Coin reports that the peer-to-peer -peer file storage and retrieval system called Storage has reached a milestone, one petabyte of storage capacity. Storage is currently in its round B of user testing, and one petabyte was their third and final goal for the round. Users lending their disk space to the network are also already being paid in real storage coins. TechCrunch has announced that the jewelry company Trove has launched a new program in which they 3D print models of their customers' jewelry designs and mail it to them for approval before making the actual gold or silver piece. And Cointelegraph has published quotes from Bitcoin experts regarding the current trend of legacy banks to attempt to create and silo their own private blockchains. The Daily Decrypt's pick came from Reggie Middleton, CEO of Veridicium and founder of Ultracoin. He said, Banks as they exist now are obsolete and will not exist as we know them in 10 years. Is anyone using Delphi, CompuServe, AOL? What did they have in common? They tried to retrofit the internet's HTTP technology into their closed systems. It worked temporarily, but then everybody found out you can deal directly with the source. You don't need them. And finally, the New York Times crossword puzzle today features a word that you may be familiar with. And that is your Daily Decrypt. Subscribe to our channel and check out our podcast.